All right, check this out, Sauerkraut. So what we did up to this point is we created our main data storage and we passed it to our application. So now we can really use it in any component that we want. Now, I really don't want to use it in our main layout because again, this isn't really supposed to be smart. It's just supposed to be kind of a way to lay out all your other child components. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually create a component that can accept that main store, that main application data. So this is the thing. We know that our data is up here, our storage, and we know that we can create components to use them, but they have to go through this thing called a container. So that looks like a pain in the butt, right? Believe it or not, containers are incredibly easy. All they are is about two functions to say, okay, this is your data, that's the component, and this is how they're connected. Super easy. But there's actually a lot of debate on how these should be kind of properly set up whenever you work with React and Redux. Now, what some people like to do is they like to make a directory called components and have all of their kind of presentational components in here. Not a lot of brains. So then what they do is they make another directory for containers and remember, containers are really just the glue to bind your store and your components together. So they make another directory for those. However, what other people do, and this is kind of the other half of the fence, is they combine these components and containers into one file. So they're kind of the same thing. So even though I may not agree with this, for teaching it, I think it's really easy if they're just both in one file because then you can see everything that's going on at once. So that's what I'm gonna do. So for right now, think of it like this. Whenever I say component, I just mean basically a dumb component, a part of your website that doesn't have any brains whatsoever. Whenever I say container, I mean basically a component that's hooked up to your data storage. That's it. So let me go ahead and make a new directory called containers. And again, containers are gonna look like 99% like components, but uh, yeah, there you go. So for this one, I'm just gonna name it, uh, I don't know, user list. So let me make a new list JS and let me see what I can steal. So what do I need? I need a React component. All right. So of course we need a React and I also need component because I'm gonna be treating this class as a component. Now, a couple other things I need in order to make a container is first of all, something called bind action creators and I'm gonna be explaining all of this in just a second. But again, bind action creators and this is coming from Redux. And one other thing is connect. And I'm sure you can probably guess what this is already. So connect from React Redux. There we go. All right. So now you pretty much just set this up like a plain old generic component. So a class, we're going to say user list. And in order to make it a component, whenever you use uh, modules or this kind of build environment, is you just extends component. Now inside here, just like any component, all it is is pretty much a way that we can return some HTML. So we just want to render out and return any HTML that we want. Now, eventually what this is going to be is it's actually going to get a list of users but for right now what am i going to do all right let's do this keep things real easy and just put like one two and three now once this is hooked up i'll change this but for right now i just want to show you guys that this is indeed working correctly all right so whenever you make a component, you need to render or display some HTML. And you can have an image in here, a heading, whatever, but for right now, this looks pretty good. So now what I need to do is just export this. So I'm just gonna write export, default, user list, and there you go. So over in my app, 
in order to actually import this, I'll just say import user list from containers, user list right there. And now anytime I want to use this, you just refer to the class name and pretty much like making your own custom tags. And I just need a self-closing tag, so boom, there you go. Now if this thing builds again, all right, so there we go. So basically, we didn't even do anything container related yet. This is just a normal React component. Um, all we did is we made a class, extends component, so it actually is a component, and then we returned some basic HTML. All right, so nothing that we haven't learned in the beginner React tutorials. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out how to take this component and hook it up to our data store right here. So how do we do that? Well, we need to convert it to a container. So all right, how the heck do we do that? Well, I'm guessing that we use some of the stuff that we imported right here. So under your class right here, go ahead and add a room for one more function and that's this. I guess gonna write the word first. The function is called map state to props. Now this is a function that confuses so many people and it's not your fault. It's because every single resource online, every single bit of documentation, it's like they're trying to make this as hard to understand as humanly possible. But this is actually one of the easiest functions in the world. All of this does is it takes a piece of your application store, your application state, the main data, and it passes it into your component. I can't say component today. It passes it in to your component. How does it pass it in there? As a property. That's all it does. And it can pass whatever pieces of the store in that it wants to. So we're just gonna go ahead and return. And again, we wanna take the users that we made earlier and we want to pass it in there. So what do we do? Well, we're going to make a property called users and it's going to be equal to the state users. That's it. That's all we do. So again, all map state to props does is it takes a piece of state, which is just part of your store and it sends it into your component as props. That's it. So does that mean that in our component, what we can do is we can just say this.props.users and it's equal to the users for our entire application? Yes, that's exactly what it means. How awesome is that? Now, there is one other thing that we need to do and that's this, and this is actually really easy. Uh, let me just cut this. In order to actually use or call this function, we just need to call connect. So connect takes map, state the props, what we just made, and then after we need to say users list. So again, whenever you just say users list right here, we're just exporting the default dumb component. The component that doesn't know anything about the main application data. Whenever we export the user list, but we connect it to map state the props, now what we're doing is we're taking that component we're making it aware of your application's store or user data, and then that's what we are exporting. So now, this is pretty much a smart component or a container. So again, you know what I was saying earlier that some people like to make this all in one file, like I just did, and other, people's, uh, or other people like to kind of take this part, which is your container glue of it, and break it up separate from this it really doesn't matter it's up to you but uh yeah there you go